Hello, I'm Matt Bolton from Mac Format, and welcome to part four of our Mac Pro video diary. Uh, and today, as I've been threatening to do for a while, I am installing Windows on the Mac Pro. Um, Boot Camp has done its thing, um, and behind me, as we speak, Windows is installing. Um, so we're going to look at uh, a few um, Windows exclusive benchmarking tools and see if we can work out what kind of performance we get from uh, from this whole new machine uh, with a whole new set of bootcamp drivers and uh, all the difficulties that comes with. Okay, so here we are in Windows 8.1 on the 4K screen on the Mac Pro and the surprising thing here is um, it's scaling really nicely. Um, I've checked the screen settings, this is at 4K, um, but out of the box it's handled the fact that it's 4K absolutely perfectly. Um, the text is fairly crisp, it's not quite as nice as um, as it is mostly on the Mac, but the, the icons are nice, everything is basically scaled really well without me having to interfere. So, uh, Microsoft One, Apple Zero on that front. Okay, next up we have been... I've quickly run my first benchmark on uh, Windows on the Mac Pro. Now the first thing I did was have a quick check of the graphics drivers because I thought Apple probably wouldn't have included uh, very good graphics drivers because traditionally it hasn't. Um, and you'll often get badgered by games and things, um, or previously you'd get badgered by games and things um, to that you need to update to the latest drivers, but it can be a real hassle. Uh, however, first thing I discovered was that AMD's Fire Pro utility was already installed, presumably by um, Apple due in its um, bootcamp installation stuff. Um, and everything seems to be recognizing both graphics cards in the Mac Pro here. Uh, and well, one thing here is uh, though I was praising the Retina support in Windows, you can see here that not all apps support it. In fact, very few and lots of parts of Windows itself seem to not support Retina text. Uh, however, that's also actually true of lots of parts of OS X. So, I'm not going to rag on Microsoft for that, but crucial thing here is here is the score I just got for the Cinebench OpenGL benchmark. So that's testing the GPUs, not the CPUs, uh, and the score is really high, really high. Um, that is, I don't have a lot like workstation um, benchmarks for this to compare against. But I can tell you that uh, TechRadar, Mac Format sister website, just reviewed one of the most powerful gaming laptops it ever has, and that got 57 and a half frames per second on this test, and this is getting double that. But what's intriguing me is I'm not even sure if that's doing both graphics cards. It just says graphics board D700 Fire GL V or five. Uh, is that one? Is that both? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Uh, going to do a little bit more testing. Okay, we've got the uh, Windows version of 3D Mark here for a quick test now. And the main reason I wanted to run this, I mean, it's uniquely Windows, so, well, it now runs on an Android and iOS, but um, it's very heavily used by um, for Windows benchmarking. But the main reason I wanted to pick it up here is because it will identify exactly what hardware it is picking up from your system. And here we have the two GPUs registering, um, which is what I expected from the fact that AMD's uh, Fire Pro control center here states that Crossfire should be possible using our two GPUs. Uh, close that. So 3D Mark says that we should be able to Go full pelt with both GPUs, so hopefully we'll get some uh, some good figures from it. We're now in uh, 3D Mark's most intensive um, battery of tests, and uh, the Mac Pro has really been starting to take off. It's actually quiet down a bit in the time it's taken me to uh, to grab my phone, 
but it was so loud uh, a few minutes ago. It was, no, well, at least so loud for um, what it's normally like, but it was close to kind of normal PC noise, and it was far absolutely blasting hot air up out. You could feel the heat this far away from it. Um, it was really going for it, and the whole thing's gotten quite warm now, although still not, like, that hot to the touch, but um, we're now definitely at the warmest it's been. Um, it's still running some of the more intensive tests, so it'll be interesting to see if it picks up the noise again. In fact, it already is. Okay, so here are our 3D Mark results. Um, weirdly, as you can see, even though it recognised the GPUs in the other screen, uh, screen it hasn't recognised them here in the results, which is a bit bizarre. Um, but it has recognised, you'll notice that it's 2x, or 2 times, I should say. Um, so it does appear to have been testing in Crossfire, even if it isn't able to name exactly what card it was testing in Crossfire. Um, in case you don't know, Crossfire is um, the AMD's technology for combining two graphics cards uh, into one massive graphics card output. Uh, so these scores here, I can tell you from experience running this benchmark on um, uh, a lot of Windows laptops and gaming PCs, is high. These are really high. And in fact, 3D Mark's benchmark will tell us exactly how high. You can see our score high-end gaming PC. We are in the top, well, well within the top 10% of all results for um, 3D Mark scores with the, with the Mac Pro, which I think probably is good, but I can kind of imagine that it could be better. I mean, it costs a huge amount of money, um, and yet is you know you could you could say it's only top ten percent, not any higher than that. But the thing to bear in mind is that these kind of benchmarks might be, might be being used by people who um, have always been overclocking graphics cards using two or more of things like the absolute latest high-end stuff from NVIDIA or AMD um, just for crazy benchmarks. Um, I think the key thing to note is that what it thinks is right for a high-end gaming PC at 9000, um, that's being beaten by about 10%. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say this is absolutely mind-blowing, but this is should be quite a good score. So here we are doing some 4K gaming on the Mac Pro running Windows. This is Battlefield 4 running at 4K uh, and so far in this cutscene, which appears to not be video, it appears to be um, all kind of live animation, real graphics, um, things are not too bad at all. Um, there's some screen tearing, but we haven't turned VSync on so that we can actually see what kind of real frame rate we're getting. But so far it looks pretty good. Of uh, Battlefield in 4K, I've ended up turning VSync on just because it was tearing so much otherwise. I couldn't really get a proper uh, proper idea of what the um, frame rate was like, um, or at least what it looked like just playing generally. Now, it looks properly stunning. Um, all the light rays coming in, um, the textures, the smoke and particles and everything like that looks fantastic. But frame rate wise, it is a little bit on the choppy side. We are getting generally something like 20 frames per second. Um, Yeah. This is, incidentally, this is with everything at Ultra. So I probably could improve this if I was willing to compromise slightly on some of the points of, um, points of image quality. 
In fact, let's try it. So we are, uh, I just did the tweaks in Battlefield to uh, move everything from ultra settings to high, but to keep it at 4K and it's, um, it's made everything a lot smoother. In particular, you can see that the frame rate has immediately gone up to uh, about 10 frames a second higher than what it was. Um, and the difference in the lighting and the smoke effects and things like that is noticeable does make a difference but um, but it plays a lot smoother which is very good uh, and you've still got the detail of the 4k um, the great textures that make it uh, um, that really make the game look superb so that is Windows on the Mac Pro um, the nice thing about all the tests we were able to see there was that it was just with Apple's regular drivers um, it used to be the bootcamp drivers were a little bit lacklustre, but it looks like Apple has maybe been, uh, at the very least, fixing that for the Mac Pro, which is sort of what you'd hope given what a high-end um, bit of kit it is. But uh, but still, it, it's a good sign that um, the Crossfire support and um, those kind of figures were coming without having to do any tinkering around in the drivers or anything like that. Um, we will probably be doing a little bit in Windows as we work towards our full review of the Mac Pro, but we won't be doing loads. We are Mac format after all, so we'll be doing mostly OS X stuff. Uh, but um, I'm sure lots of other people will be doing tinkering around, so if that's an area you're interested in, I'm sure you'll have no lack of information from around the internet to, um, to seize on. Uh, but yeah, so thanks again for watching today. Um, we're actually going to do only one more of these... Um, of these videos because uh, it's time to take some time off uh, to take a bit of a, a proper holiday before we get right back into it and we have to do the full review of the Mac Pro and finish off all the rest of the issue of our latest issue so uh, so yes see you tomorrow <laughs>